everybody, welcome to the last class of Chinese painting. I hope you enjoyed this uh, month of February and in January learning about a different style of painting you might not usually expose to. So we are going to do a painting of a cat tonight with some fish. So we're going to start a little bit on a touch on a little bit of animals and fur, which is, uh, I think I showed you the first class and how to manipulate your, manipulate your brush for fur, but uh, we're actually going to use it now on a cat. So we are going to use very simple colors. We're just using our ink, black watercolor, we're using red, and we <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little cold tonight, and we have um, yellow here. It's a very simple palette. So get these three out if you have them, or if you have just watercolor or whatnot. So again, you wanna shake your ink. And I'm just gonna put it on a palette. And make sure you have, uh, I like two palettes if you're using ink. If you're using watercolor, one palette is fine. The ink runs, and I use two tubs of water because the ink just works differently than the watercolor. So we're just gonna add now I got a clear palette because I want to really show you um, how to really lighten it up. And with the last couple weeks, I've been using this and it's kind of hard to see. So I figure I'm going to start fresh tonight. So just make sure you always close this because if it tips, it will go everywhere. And that will not be fun. <laughs> Actually, it's something that has not happened to me, which is surprisingly. You see, you see how runny it is? Imagine if you had everything here. All right, so I'm going to take my brush. Hey, Marilyn. <laughs> how are you? I'm going to take my brush and the tub of water that's clear. I'm going to try to actually show you this better than I have been. I'm going to put a puddle of water. Now, I want this is going to be the body of the cat, and I want it really light. And again, we're going to just take, always add more, just a little bit. And it, you can see it right away. It darkens up. So here's a trick I probably haven't shown you. You can also get, if you're worth the ink or any kind of tone, you can get like a scrap piece of paper. I'm going to move this aside. And you can test it before you put it on your artwork. So that is... Maybe a little lighter, so I'm going to add a little more water. We want it really light. Like, really light, like that. That's actually really good. So this is a good, useful tool to have. Just something you can test stuff out, especially when you're mixing color or you're mixing um, what, uh, just water and how light you want it to be. And pull this out. All right, so we're going to start with the body of a cat, and the cat is crouch, crouching over on a pond. So we want the back to kind of angle and the butt to stick up <laughs> in a nice kind of elegant way of saying that. And it's going to look light, but that's fine. I'm going to almost make like an oval shape and fill it in. It's going to be watery, but we want to start with this and give it time to dry. And I have my handy dandy hair dryer this time. Okay, so that's the butt. And, um, and then we're going to have the head come out, just like a circle. Don't worry about detail yet. And there's my husband coming home. Love the conversation in my house. Okay, so you have a oval and just like a circle here. And I can just add a fluffy tail, or it will be fluffy, just a tail. This is just very simple. And then like a leg. I'm not, see, I'm not really focusing on detail yet, which is nice if you're not used to um, drawing or painting a lot. Just, you just want think simple shapes. 
And then I'm going to have a paw come out just sort of like that, and then I go to another paw. And we were going to we're going to add detail. That's, that's all it is with the cat right now. So we're going to let that dry. And we're going to use the same color or the same tone and grab a small brush. And we're going to put some hints of tall grass along the pond here as this dries. So I'm just same tone. We kind of did stuff like this before. We're just going to do the light right now. I'm going to add different tones to it. You can even have it kind of curve. Like it's at the bank. Because that's where it's at. Little kitties getting in trouble and trying to catch fish. So, And then just for... To make it... So we don't have empty space here. I'm just going to put some grasses and we're going to do actually darker and dark you know so it's not just the same color but we're kind of just putting like a the background layer so to speak okay now while that dries a little bit I'm going to actually start working on the body of the fish. So I'm trying to let it dry in layers. So we're going to do like goldfish. So I just, this is where our yellow and red come into play. Now I'm going to move this guy because I feel like there's limited space. I want to. So we're going to, we're going to actually use this yellow, <coughs> excuse me, for the eyes. Sorry about my cold. So I'm going to leave it a little over there, and this is the one I'm going to mix. <clears throat> so I want pure yellow for the eyes. I'm just, since I have it, I'm just going to squeeze it out. It's being stubborn. It doesn't want to open. There we go. And I'm not going to just, you know, dump it on. I always just want to add a little at a time to get the color I want. So I'm going to put the red over there. And take my red and see, I, I just barely touched it. It's already a nice orange. Okay, so this is going to be somewhat the same concept as last week with the carp or whatever we were painting with the fish. I might add a little tiny bit of water to what I just mixed. And we're going to make like, I hate this, I don't know how to, I'm not, I need to articulate better, but you're going to start light, push down and pull off, kind of like a teardrop, not completely, but like a, it'll be skinny, fat to skinny again. So that's the movement I'm doing. Sometimes when I just do it and it's hard to see and might not know exactly how I'm doing it. So I'm doing like three fish here. The kitty's trying to catch the fish. Just so I just showed you. Originally I put three, but let's see. You can put a little guy over here if you want. Okay. Here's the body of the fish. Again, it's really simple shapes. My son is trying to dance in front of me to make me laugh and distracted. So, <laughs> so the head you could just put like a dot or like just like a just a little round spot wherever you want the head direction you want them to go so i'm having this guy let's have these i have a piece of hair here hold on i'm shutting i'm gonna have these guys face each other 
And it's not much. It's just very subtle stuff. Hi, Sue. And let's have this guy facing the cat because he's not smart and he's swimming towards the cat. Just round it off wherever you want the head. And where should I put this guy? Let's have him follow his brothers. Again, if you have any questions, just write a comment. And then now we're going to do the tail. And you don't have to, you almost want it to flow. You just kind of want to, don't want to think about it. It's kind of weird how to explain it, but... We're almost going to do like two quick strokes. Just kind of be, don't be, uh, push real hard down. Just kind of let it, and kind of flick your um, arm and just. Don't be so technical and be uptight about it. The more loose you are with, especially with fish swimming in the water, the more natural or look. Guys, a big tail. Why not? And then we're gonna sit down. Just put little fins here. So I'm gonna hold my brush up. Almost kind of like the. Uh, it's just very simple strokes. I'm not I'm not putting too much pressure, but I'm putting the same amount of pressure. Unlike this, where we went light, heavy, back to light. I'm putting the same pressure on it. Oops, that fin went the other way. Apparently, I thought that thin, thin, fin went that way. Oh, well. I wasn't paying attention. So we're going to let this dry now. Kitty cat's getting pretty dry. You can always touch it. If it's somewhat damp, it's still not completely dry yet because although it might not run completely when you add something on the top, it will like kind of get blurry and you don't want that. So if it doesn't look soft and wet, if you touch it, if it feels a little damp, wait a little bit. But we're going to add a little more um, darker grass now as everything dries. So I'm going back to my ink. And I'm just going to add, see, see how runny this is? It actually just went right in there. I'm going to add a little more to my water down that's kind of ran everywhere anyway. And again, take your piece of paper and see what you like. If you feel that, I like that. That's about right. If you think it's too dark, then add more water. If it's not light enough, then you add more. I mean, if it's too light, you add more ink. But it's nice to practice before you put it on. Or at least test it out. It's hard to tell on here. Because honestly this is a lot lighter. But when you look at it on the palette. It almost looks the same. So it's kind of. Unless you know how much water you put in. It's kind of hard to eyeball it. Just by looking at it on the palette. So we're just going to do the same thing. So it's, I'm just doing more. Because it gives more depth. And tone variation. It just doesn't look like just flat. of the same color. So the light one should give more of a illusion that that's the background. These should feel like they're closer. That's the um, the uh, trick with tones. Might even add a little more dark. And I might want to even add a couple more dark pieces. It's a couple. These are just simple. I'm just pulling up with my tip of my brush. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is kind of give more of a, a boundary for the bank. So I just rinsed my brush to dry it off. And I'm going to go straight with the ink up here. And I'm just going to add just little bits of grass here. Kind of like where the mud might even be.
If you can see it, I'm trying to eyeball the phone and make sure you can see where I'm. You can even, um, if you want, you can even give kind of a, just a couple of lines to give a, an idea of where the bank is. Hey Cindy, put this up. So again, I might have to blow dry it, but if it's too damp, don't. That's that's still a, a test to see if it's ready yet. But I think the fish are actually ready. So we're gonna do detail on the fish, so you don't have to hear my blow dryer, and then go back to the cat. So I'm taking my smallest bamboo brush I have, or if you don't have bamboo, you can do like a liner brush. Anything that comes to a point. I'm going to add some detail to the fish. I wish I had smaller bamboo brushes for this. So now I'm going to use straight black ink. I'm not watering it down. I'm going to just put two dots. Let's see if I can stay, stay. We're gonna put two dots here for the eyes, and then we're gonna just make like just a little tiny stroke for the mouth. And that's pretty much it. You just want some simple impressions. Cause you might be hard to see with my hand in the way. I just wanted to show you what I was doing. All right, so my hand's straight up. I might want to add a little more paint. I guess Bob Ross would say, happy little fish. <laughs> All right. I'm not even trying to make it look, I'm just trying to give impressions. I'm not going to try to add scales and all that stuff. That's for a different kind of painting. So, all right, so we got the fish. Now we're going to do some kind of water movement to show that they're just swimming around. So you could go black like I did, but I think I'm going to go a little lighter. I think that might look a little nicer. Let me make, go back to my other medium. Yeah, that should probably look nicer. All right, so I'm going to give movements. So maybe this guy's swimming that way. This guy's going that way. And of course, the cat's going to have splashing. So you're going to have that on the cat. Let's see if you can. Uh, just like lines of movement. That's really it for the fish. Actually, we're gonna add a little more for the water. Let's see. I am like, oh, I'm done. Oh, I wanna add more, it's, I guess. <laughs> I always wanna add more stuff. You're gonna add like a movement cause he's kind of there splashing and then maybe even over here a little bit. Kitty's making a mess. See you wet yet? He's almost there, so I'm gonna add some detail in the grass because I think he's almost there. So I'm gonna get again some black, same brush, small. And some of the tops of these grasses, I'm going to just add like the seeds, or I don't know what, it's impressions of like flowers or just grass, wheat in the, not wheat, but you know how grass looks around the bank. They have seedings and stuff. I'm just dotting some. Hi, Jess. And I'm not doing every one. I'm sort of randomly
just gives some extra detail here. That's simple. Let's put one more. All right. I think Kitty Cat is ready. We will find out. <laughs> All right. So I'm now I'm just using my small brush. I think the rest of the time because we're gonna we're adding detail. The the one I did this with was medium. I don't think I mentioned that. I use a medium brush for the body. Just in case you're wondering. Okay, so this, I'm going to do detail jet black. So I'm just grabbing the ink. This is a little wet. You know, let's blow dry this. Everything's dry with that. And if you're impatient like me and you're doing a video, you don't want your people to wait forever, you just take a hair blower. One more time. <laughs> I remember when I taught class to, I think there were third graders, there was like 20 of them. And we, uh, I put water, got water. And I asked the moms, it was a homeschool class, to bring some hair dryers. And I think I have mine, like t maybe another one. And we're doing like a whole bunch of, Land, like uh, sunsets and it was saturated with water and oh my gosh took forever to dry everybody before they had to get to the next step but it did work <laughs> all right that should be all right so i'm going to grab the ink again hopefully this won't run and it's not supposed to run if it's dry there was a puddle on his paw so i'm just going to kind of outline his paw a little bit it looks like we're good And just kind of outline it a little here and there. And I, I'm dad. I'm just. I only have ink on like the very, very tip, so I keep dipping it. And if you see, since it wasn't completely dry, it did run a little bit, but not bad. So ideally, you would let this dry in between. I'm just giving a little claws, maybe a little. If this brush was more fine, it'd be better. And I'm just gonna outline this head a little bit and make sure he's got, see what I did here. I'm gonna have to let this dry too. Let's do it. That a little too runny. All right. Now we're going to take your brush, and we I went this a long time ago. We're going to separate it. And you want to dry, I mean, when you put it in ink, it's not going to be dry, but you don't want it sopping wet either. I want to dip it in the tips on the black ink. Separate here. And we're just here. This is going to give the fur effect. So I'm going to give him like a Garfield look. Let's see. 
And if you could see, it looks a lot like fur. You can use this on lions or dogs. I can even give it like little whisks, like maybe sometimes cats, but so you can see the fur coming out. Make him a furry cat. I think I'm going to add a little more detail in the back here that's not fur. I missed that. Maybe. Give him more of a foot there. All right, see if he's dry. Because I want to put yellow in his eye there. I'm going to quick, just in case, because I know we'll run if I don't do this. Because we're doing it fast. Alright, so I'm taking the yellow eye square out that I did not um, mix. And I'm just straight. Not even adding water to it, just using it straight. I'm just gonna, gonna have to have sturdy hands here. Might dab it in, I don't want to smear it for his eyes. I have dirty hands today. Just looking back, making sure I got everything here. I think that's pretty much it. I might want to work on this face a little bit, but. But you don't want to get, I don't, I don't want to get too detailed here. Like I missed his ear, so I might just want to color that in. So I just did simple shapes. Oh, there it went. All right, so that's just some basic techniques you can use. The main thing I want to get um, tonight was, you know, especially with furry animals, that's the technique for fur. And you just want to break it down into simple shapes. So don't get caught up when you, especially if, um, you, even when you draw or paint, and as an artist, you got to think of shapes and then, but as a beginner or whatever, you want to think of simple shapes. And when you sketch, when I sketch something that looks complex, I'll break it down into shapes and then erase it and keep adding detail. So you got to start thinking about simple shapes. So this is a good um, exercise to start animals with just basic shapes. It doesn't have to be really complicated to make something nice so all right well thank you for watching that's all i have hopefully this made a little more sense from last week's because it's almost the same technique with the fish and i just added the cat in there and we've been working on these kind of strokes all right so thank you so much i will keep you posted if anything else is coming up soon in the group and let me know you can always comment in the group uh, let me know what you want to see. Uh, if you've done any of these projects, please post it. I'd love to see it. This is your group. If you have something that you like do like for art and maybe you're a great pastel drawer and you want to do a video, you can free, feel free to post your videos if you have something to share too. It's not just me. I want everyone to participate if you, know, you feel like you want to. So, all right, thank you so much. You have a great rest of the week and I'll see you soon. Thanks.